Hello everyone, and welcome to the video for Unit 8, Day... Oops, Unit 8, Day 11. And today's video is dedicated to Scarlet in 6A. Hi, Scarlet. All right. Today we are continuing with inverse operations. The last two days we've been working with inverse operations for whole numbers. And today we're going to work with decimals and fractions. So a quick reminder that inverse operations, inverse operations are operations that undo each other. This means in order to undo multiplying by 0 0.4, you have to do the opposite of multiplying. So you have to divide Pens running out. Gotta switch it. You have to divide by 0 0.4. And in order to undo subtracting 1 and 2 thirds, you have to do the opposite of subtracting, which is adding 1 and 2 thirds. Okay. That's our vocabulary. And this quick review, I thought we would want to do that, but I actually don't want you to worry about that, so you can cross that out. And let's just go straight into example number one. So here, it's x, and then we're adding 2 and 3 fifths to that x, and this equals 4 and 1 half. So let's start by drawing our line down the equal sign so that we can remember that everything that happens on the left side also has to happen on the right side so that we can stay balanced. To get rid of the adding 2 and 3 fifths we'd have to do the opposite. So the opposite of adding is subtracting. We'll do 2 and 3 fifths here. And then if we do subtracting 2 and 3 fifths on the left side, we also have to subtract 2 and 3 fifths on the right side. And here, the 2 and 3 fifths on the left side cancel each other out. So we're just left with x. And this equals... Now before, we could just do the subtraction in our head with whole numbers. But for this... Uh, it's mixed numbers, so it's going to be a little more complicated. But we want to do 4 and 1 half minus 2 and 3 fifths. And if you remember, any time that we're adding or subtracting fractions, we always want a common denominator. So I check out my two denominators in the mixed numbers. 4 and 1 half, the denominator is 2. 2 and 3 fifths, the denominator is 5. So between 2 and 5, I think to myself, what is the lowest number that um, I can that can be divided by 2, that it can also be divided by 5? So I think it's easiest to go with the bigger number. So 5, that can't be divided by 2. I go to the next one. 5 times 2 is 10. Can 10 be divided by 2? Yes, it can. So I'm going to have 4, and I want 10 as the denominator. So in order to get to 10, I multiply 2 times 5. So then I multiply the numerator by 5, 1 times 5. So I have 4 and 5 tenths minus 2, and I want 10 as the denominator. I had to multiply 5 times 2 to get to 10, and then 3 times 2, which would be 6. All right, so now I have 4 and 5 tenths minus 2 and 6 tenths. I would start by um, subtracting the whole numbers. So 4 minus 2 is 2. And then I would have 5 minus 6. 
5 minus 6 over 10. Now, 5 minus 6, I have to borrow from the whole number. So I'd have a 1 here. And then I can add another 10 to my 5. So I'd get 15. And then I'd have 1. And then 15 minus 6 is 9. So 1 and 9 over 10. So x equals 1 and 9 tenth. Whew. That one was long. If you have another way of subtracting mixed numbers that you like better, you can use that way too. There's more than one way to do it. Let's look at example, well, this is actually example number two, not number three. Solve for y. 0 0.6 times y equals 12. I'll draw the line going through the equal sign. And if I'm multiplying by 0 0.6 on this side, I have to do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing by 0 0.6. And if I divide by 0 0.6 on the left side, I also have to divide by 0 0.6 on the right side, just like that. And then the 0 0.6s cancel each other out. And I just have y equals, now it's going to be 12 divided by 0 0.6. So let's do this on the side here. 12 divided by 0 0.6. Now if you remember, when we're dividing by a number that has a decimal, I have to move the decimal to the end of the number. Okay, now it's at the end. And in order to move it to the end, I have to move it one place. So this means I have to move the decimal in this number, which in this case is at the end, one place over also. So now it's here, and I'll add a 0. And now I can divide. So 6, can 6 go into 1? Nope. But can 6 go into 12? Yes. 2 times. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. Bring down this zero, and I get a zero again. How many times can six go into zero? Zero times. There we go. So y equals 20. And there's my answer. OK. With that, I want you to finish the last two problems on page four. You can move on to page five if you have extra time, but focus on finishing these two problems on page four. Thank you so much for playing my game. And good luck.